Basketball podcast, also known as MOB Podcast, episode 75. I'm Evan. And I'm Ja. And it's our basketball podcast. We recap, break down, and analyze players and teams from previous games from the previous day. How are you this Tuesday, Ja? Um, I'm chilling, chilling, chilling. That's good. That's good. Any any anything going on? Uh um outside of the um work later, no. Nothing really going on, but it was good looking up and like talking with the bros through FaceTime. You know what I mean? That was good. But outside of that, that's it. Said so that like they were yet. You know, my um, I hope everyone having a good day. I hope everyone having a good day. Uh, I'm I'm doing good, uh, chilling like always. Uh, but well, trying my best to chill. Uh, based off of last night's game. Which, let's just go right into it. The Battle of New York. The Brooklyn Nets. That team, minus that guy. Up against the New York Knicks. Julius Randle, man, quickly getting his first start of the season. It's about time. And he did ball out in his first start as well. Off of floaters. Well, I off of floaters. That's crazy. <laughs> Killing Kyrie off of floaters. Kyrie couldn't stop. It. He didn't know what to do. <laughs> Oh yeah, well he he was he he did his thing, but the Nets really did their thing and got out early in that mm-hmm. first half. Uh, Kyrie was cooking. <laughs> yeah. Kyrie was cooking. You know, he, nobody can guard him one on one, no matter who it is. It's extremely hard to guard him. Uh, James Harden is he was struggling in terms of his shooting, but he did have uh, a triple double. Yeah, and he was being the facilitator that he's been doing. That he's been for this entire uh, season yep. for this Brooklyn Nets team. And Jeff Green also played well of them, stepping in up, stepping up uh, in terms of their um, point total, in terms of their scoring. And the Nets were really riding, you know, this wave. They had a good, comfortable lead and was trying to build on it, but the Knicks was staying around. But the Nets looked like they had this game. They were up double digits for mostly the entirety of the game. Then the fourth quarter hit, and the Knicks started to hit their stride. Started getting their rhythm. They started tightening up on defense, played great defense down the stretch against the Nets. I mean, they are one of the best defensive teams in the league for a reason. Oh, uh, Tim yeah, Tom Thibodeau done a great job on the defensive side of the ball, as he has done his whole career. Uh, Julius Randle, uh, they really <laughs> – he could just get to the hole and get to his move whenever he wants to. Exactly. Yeah, he, he's so good at that. Um, RJ Barrett, he he had it going as well. And next thing you know, the Knicks are down by four. Yeah. Late in the game. Yeah, they didn't stop the Nets. And the Nets uh, kept pouring it on with Kyrie and Harden. And the Knicks really couldn't hit their shots late. And it looked like the Nets had this game. But then the Knicks didn't give up. And they kept, uh, they kept trying to, you know, score and kept playing tight defense. And next thing you know, they're down by three. And they get a jump ball after it was overturned, because originally it was a foul. Knicks challenged it, overturned, jump ball. The Knicks got it, call timeout. Set up play, has Julius Randle, and pull up the controversial play. Julius Randle goes up for a shot. Kyrie hits it. So he doesn't shoot it. Comes back down and it is called a travel. Yeah. Yeah. It's either a double dribble or a travel. They call it the other way. That, yeah, that's what they so did. They called it the other way. They called that and Julius Randle was really furious about that. Really upset about that. <laughs> I mean, he was going after Scott Foster. Literally, like, it was, I mean, red in his eyes. It was bad. Scott Forster got the heck out of there <laughs> as quick as possible. <laughs> Once he turned around, he saw him, he said, man, I got it. Trust me, these rest be moving like they want the smoke. They don't want no smoke. <laughs> yeah, they don't want no smoke. Come on. Uh, 
and yes, as a result, the Knicks do fall to the Nets. The Nets do are the Nets do survive the comeback attempt on the Knicks. Before we get into the game, first, do you think the the, the refs made the right call on that play oh. final play for the Knicks? At first, when I seen it, I thought I, I was like in my mind, I was like, Randall, what are you doing? Why would you do that? I thought that I thought when I first seen it before they did the replay that he double dribbled. That's what I saw. Cause he went up, he's clearly going up for a shot. Both both feet were off the ground. And then he went back down. And I went like, why would he do that? He that's an automatic call. That's an easy call. That's goes in that goes in the next way. But when watching the replay and seeing that Kyrie touched it, it was just like, oh, okay. Now that makes sense. And then, but so when you clearly tell by the replay, the, the refs got it wrong. But hurt to me, Randall, the refs got it wrong. What, what hurt Randall was, I think when you when that usually happens, you're supposed to he drop the ball. Drop the ball immediately. He didn't drop the ball immediately, though. That's the thing. Yes. I think that's what hurt him, and that's what made the refs call it uh a travel, travel or double dribble. Yeah. So, I mean, when we play pickup, you know that's what happens. Yeah. That happens. You're supposed to drop the ball. Exactly. So, he didn't do that. So, they, they called that call. I think if he would have just done that, that if, this wouldn't be in the situation exactly. that he got into. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. That's the reason why also, to me, it, it, it looked like a double dribble because the fact that he took so long to come down with the ball, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's the reason why I thought it was a double dribble at first until I saw the replay. But, yeah, yeah. Randall just has to be more – well, I might I can't even say that because in the moment you just can't – you can't really say anything about those situations within the moment. But is it still – is it still that call even if he doesn't drop the ball? They, he has to drop the ball. He has to drop the ball. That's the only way. If he doesn't drop the ball or let go of the ball when Kyrie touches it, it's basically still a violation on him. It will go. The, it will go their way. That would be a tra- that would be um a travel. It wouldn't even be a jump ball. It would be a travel. He yes. already went up with the ball. Got the two feet. It's too late. Yeah. So that that was my uh complaint. Well, that was my uh analysis on that situation. Um, as for the game itself. Um, I have credit to the Knicks to the way they battled back into this game. Not even in terms of where that whole jump ball sequence happened and them getting now down by three, but even before that. Yeah. Down by double digits and they fought hard. Um, tighten up their defense. Really. Yeah. And this is a the, the Nets, this is a great offensive team. And that's it. The Knicks did their best that they could against this Nets team. The best that they could. On the, on the defensive side of the ball. So I got to give respect to that. Got to give respect to Manny quickly showing out in his first um, start in his NBA career. 21 points. F- floater. I mean, he has a he has a floater and a step back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Got to give credit to Julius Randle, the all-star for a reason. 30 and 12, who really um came, was big time for, clut- for um, the clut- in the clutch for them. Clutch for them, yeah, yeah. Or well, Spike Lee was at the game, so you know they had to ball out for Spike Lee, I guess. <laughs> oh, but but yeah. Uh, are you on to uh, say something? Yeah. Um. Outside of that controversial play, just good, just good sides. Um. Good game from both sides. You know what I mean. Both teams did really well. Um. Harden, I wait. He had that triple double. The moment by the time it was the second, second yeah. by, before the first. <laughs> By the time the first half even ended, and so I think so, yeah, yeah. He so he was already balling out, even though he didn't put up much in the scoring category. He was still being his usual self. Kyrie always going to be a dance creator, a master at his craft, like always. That next team will still be deadly offensively, even when they're in close situations like this, because they're just that talented, and especially the system that they have or that they're still developing as of right now. And you got again. You got to give the Knicks credit. A, a young team who who are the underdogs. Nobody had credit and faith except for Knicks fans. They 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 nearly pull up an upset until that last moment. And Randall has all right to be upset about that last controversial play. But just good fight from them. Next time, drop the ball, Randall. So make it obvious. Exactly. But, yeah, don't don't go killing Scott Foster. 
But yeah, as a result, the next two take the win, Kate, Katie, Harden and Kyrie beating the first time all-star and a rookie. So congratulations to them. There's no need to do. Yeah, not gonna get one over me, Brooklyn. <laughs> All right. Going to the other game um in the doubleheader, the Lakers and the Warriors. And let's just say put out this, put it out as it is. Uh the Lakers just really just <laughs> All right, that is really it. They just came, came out and just bowled. Uh, the Warriors kept it close in the first quarter. Uh, then the Lakers started to pull away in that second quarter. And the third quarter hit, and that was it. Yeah. Hey, I think there's nothing really much to say. Um, Wash King, triple-double, looking amazing like always. But the, the Lakers just, once again, Golden State got beat up by another team from Los Angeles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, just got annihilated. Um the whole team on the Lakers was just clicking while, meanwhile, Golden State, I don't know what it is, but as of recently, that is, uh, they, they haven't been the Kings of California. Yeah. Of I mean, I thought it was going to come out play better than this. I mean, they just got uh, the win against Utah last uh, two nights ago. Big win against Utah. So yeah. even if they lost this game, but the way they lost, I mean, damn. But – I got to give credit to the Lakers team. Everybody balled out. This wasn't just LeBron thing. LeBron yeah. did have a triple-double, yes. But Taylor Horton Tucker, Montrez Harrell, Kyle Kuzma, uh, KCP. I mean, it's a balanced scoring team. Exactly. And they just put it on. It like went into overdrive. Like It was, it was crazy the way the Lakers played, just they dominating the Warriors. <laughs> They surpassed overdrive, man. They they went to a different kind of elite. I don't even know what was that, but it, yeah, man. It, it the Warriors, you think they will like carry the momentum that they had against the win from the Jazz, but I don't know. They just regressed out of nowhere. I don't know what it was, but well, uh, yeah. But for this game, I'm gonna give it more to that. The Lakers just played just better. Yeah, yeah. You know. The exception of Kyle Kuzma airballing a technical foul, free throw, but he he he's play he played good and he's been playing good. So I guess I'll leave him alone. Uh, but yeah, great win by the Lakers, just in a dominating performance against this Warriors team. But all right, yeah. other games that are happening around the league. Anything that you like to talk about? Um, first I'd like to talk about the Clippers versus Mavericks, and this was a. This was a battle all the way 51 to one point blowout, fifty two. Uh nah, that 50. that would never happen. That would never happen again. <laughs> Maybe forty nine. <laughs> well, pro- pro- probably forty, probably forty, but you know, you know, but but not not fifty ever again. Not never fifty ever again. And that will be embarrassing if that happens ever again, regardless if it's against the Mavericks or any other team. But let's just get right into it. Um, the Clippers came out early lead. They played with a lot of energy. Coming out, they were basically they they basically started off being up like so I think like 20, 21 to ten, but you know the Mavericks being the Mavericks and the team that they are, you know what I mean. They were able to even mount a, like a, they 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 quickly came back into the game and basically from that point um towards the end of the first quarter and throughout the whole duration of the game, it was basically a back and forth exchange. You. you you just see both teams just exchanging buckets back to back to back. And it wasn't until it got down to the stretch in which the Clippers really actually pulled away. Um, the moment the um, Tim Hardaway hit a three to make it 99 to 103, basically the, it, the, the Mavericks didn't score after that point. And it was just all Clippers getting fouls and just making shots to basically win the game. And just like what you said, PG people like to give PG a lot of slander, but yeah, he hit the dagger three in front of Luka Doncic. So, well, they're not gonna talk about that. They're gonna talk about uh, the bad performance he had throughout the night <laughs> before that. Uh, yeah, PG, had, PG didn't have the best of games, but he did hit the dagger on Luka. Yeah, so, but cool. but yeah, it it wasn't really it, look. Even though it was back and forth scoring, not everybody had like a big outing really. Like Kawhi finished with twenty three. He finished with 15. Um, Lou Williams finished with 15, I believe, or 11. 
it, it wasn't it wasn't really it wasn't really much 14 14 it, it wasn't really it wasn't really much from everybody everybody it was well balanced but it wasn't anybody that stood out yeah great win by this clippers team avenging the loss or bouncing back from the loss against the pelicans a few nights ago and yeah. avenging the loss <laughs> to the mavericks yeah it, it wasn't a special loss from man. a few months ago it yeah. wasn't still fetching, but it, it, they, they still won. They still won. Um, another game I would like to talk about is the Hornets versus the Kings. Sacramento Kings. And look, at, they always say, it's the old saying, right? It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Well, the Hornets got that message. <laughs> I thought he was going to say it's the old saying, the Kings suck. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. That too. Most definitely that too. The Kings basically they had the the game they had the lead for majority of the game, and it got to a point where they were legit up by fourteen points, and then you got towards towards the end of the third and all throughout the fourth. Oh, you know, next thing, the Hornets just basically just <laughs> basically turned into their owner, <laughs> like you know what I mean, doing it on both ends, like or like you know, like surprisingly they 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 changed up their defense. And like you know, they just started. They started getting their points out in transition. They started creating their shots and their shots and everything. And as a result, all you know, you see, they get a steal. Gordon Hayward get a dunk, and basically, they had the lead for the game right there. And they just never looked back from that point. It was just close exchange, and like at that point, they just they just took it. And I was just like, this is another lead that the Kings blew up. I don't know how they made this slip away, but the Kings just been having this problem throughout the whole season. I don't know what's been going on. And they did, and this is, and they did it. They, this is the same team they blew a lead to. And they did it. Yes. I was, I was going to bring that up. The last time they played, remember the, the Kings are up by like 10 with a minute to go and they couldn't hit their free throws. Couldn't play defense. And yet the Hornets came back and won the game. You just talk. It's, you just talk about defense, threes, transition points, getting into the paint, making the right passes. The Hornets was doing everything within those final moments, and the and the Kings couldn't get nothing. They just couldn't get anything, except for one three from Buddy Hill. But that's it. Well, you said the Hornets turned into their owner. The Kings turned into their coach. So. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, good by the, by this Hornets team and another, yeah, another disappointing loss for the Sacramento Kings. Sorry, De'Aaron. Job's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, uh, we have one news, but that news will be talked about during these predictions. So let's get in. Let's get into it. Predictions <laughs> for tonight's set of games. A interesting batch we have. First, starting off the first primetime game of the day, TNT 7:30. It is the Utah Jazz going up against the Boston Celtics. We got. Um, I got I got the Jazz bouncing back, and I got the Celtics. <laughs> the Cavs or the Heat. 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 Two teams with bombs lately. The Knicks or the 76ers. Knicks trying to bounce back off the loss. Um, the Knicks. The Knicks. The Thunder. Watch them win now. The Thunder or the Bulls? Um, the Bulls. The Thunder. The Hawks or the Rockets? Hawks. Rockets currently on a 16 game losing streak. 16 games. I got the Hawks. Maybe Christian will return. Who knows? But I don't think he can help them right now. At this point, we're sending them off for the whole season. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, they need Hakeem, Ralph Sampson, T Mac, yeah. and Harden back. And Yao. <laughs> and Yao. <laughs> Unbelievable. And CP3. <laughs> All right. 
the next and last primetime game of the night, TNT, 10 o'clock. It is the New Orleans Pelicans going up against the Portland Trail Blazers with the returning C.J. McCollum. Who you got? I got the Blazers. And I got the Blazers as well. It is finally, finally, it's nice to see that C.J. is going to be playing and he's going to be back. Hopefully he stays healthy for the remainder of the season. Yeah. Just for the Pelicans to make Pelican Blazers to make that push. They need CJ back mm-hmm. and they need him healthy. Yep. So yeah, they need him being be, consistent. Yeah, it's going to be good seeing CJ back. I don't know if he will play that much, you know, with limited restrictions and all that, and he just returning. Yeah, Probably well, won't, you know, slow him down. Yeah, right. well, as long as they don't as long as they'll act like it's 2018, then they 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 should try their best to get this win, you know what I mean? Yeah. And lastly, the Tim Rules or the Lakers. Defending um, champions. Lakers. Lakers. The Lakers. All right. I think it's time to wrap things up. Any final thoughts? Um, about the De'Aaron Fox joke. I was just joking. Um, like, you know, ja, like like he's better than Ja, in my opinion. But like, you know, I just want him to take that as like, you know. Well, he he's never gonna watch this, obviously. Never. I, never. But, uh, <laughs> Well, I, I'm I'm just saying, you know, I I just hope like you know it, he he hears this in his mind, and like you know, hope that the Kings can be better. That's all. But he's not. He he is way better than John Murray. It's not even about that. The Kings just a terrible basketball team. <laughs> terrible basketball team. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they keep losing. They need to get it together. Really, they, some changes need to be made. Some risks need to be taken. All right. The Kings have not been good for the better part of the decade or the past two decades. You know what that means? Decade and a half. You know what that means? It's time for them. Hey, Seattle, you you still open up for new teams? (laughs) Don't do that to Sacramento. Come on. Seattle, I I hear you calling basketball city. Sacramento is just farmland. Man, Oscar Robinson crowned himself to sleep. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what's going on in Sacramento. I mean, you think at least even if the bad teams in the past decade or the past decade and a half, you know, like relatively the Knicks, the Timberwolves, yeah. the Hornets, uh, those teams like that, the Cavs, well, Cavs had LeBron, but those yeah. teams, the Suns, Song, Those yeah. teams have been terrible, but they've had at least some sorts of success. Mm-hmm. The Knicks made the playoffs uh 2013, 2012, and 2011. Yeah. Timberwolves made the playoffs when Jimmy Butler was there. The Suns, uh, Suns made the Suns made the, the Western Conference Finals the last time they made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And yet and they nearly I, made the playoffs again, too. At one point. Yeah, in 2014, I believe. Yeah. And yet, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, with the Kings. It's like they haven't they have been good at all. Like, well, their only bright spot has been Boogie. <laughs> they bright. They thought their bright spot was Tyree Evans. Yeah, they thought that. Well, the, that along with not developing a, a jump shot and like you know injuries and the league changing around them and the league changing around them. Yeah. But the only time that we have ever the only bright spot for Sacramento truly has been the Marcus Cousins mainly, but also that trio of him, Rudy Gay, and Isaiah Thomas. Outside of that, ever since dude, it was never the same. It was never the same. It, it was just never the same. Yeah, like that trio did like vibes. Like they just well, they they they, they, they averaged over twenty a game, so they were doing vibes. They were improving. That they didn't they didn't make it to the playoffs. No, the Sacramento. When the last time Sacramento Kings went into the playoffs? Put it on the screen. I think when Ron Otess was on the team. <laughs> I swear. What year was, was that? I think that was uh, like 15 years ago. So 2006. It's, it's just embarrassing going on Sacramento. Something has to be done. There is no way they can be this bad for this long. It's like, excuse me, like no playoff appearances this whole time. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, 
it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's going on. Something has to be done. You better hope you could continue. Uh, I can't say the draft because I don't. The draft, don't... what? Uh, a lot of the draft is picks have been blunders. Yeah. That's and a lot of and, and the good draft picks they have, Isaiah Thomas, the Marks Cousins, De'Aaron Fox. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> they either they either trade them away. Or wasting away their potential. Yes. Yes. It's exactly what they're doing with the Air Fox right now. I don't know. Something has to be done in Sacramento. I'm tired of seeing that much that much talent on that team lose consistently. Oh, Seattle Kings, bro. It sounds kind of nice. Mitch Richmond. <laughs> the Seattle Super Kings. Throw, throw, throw Seattle away. <laughs> the Seattle Super Kings. <laughs> Man, nobody want to affiliate with the Kings. <laughs> Seattle Super Kings, come on, man. Yeah, that's that's just our thoughts on the on the Kings. That's that's how we feel. Yeah, but but, but anyway. <sighs> with that being said, thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Also follow RG down in the description below. And once again, I am Evan. I'm John, and this is the Mind of Basketball Podcast.